Well, welcome back to the homestead. Today I've got a little bit of a plumbing project I want to get knocked out. So, in the master shower, my wife and I originally had planned on putting the shower head and the shower valve on the exterior wall of the shower. And that's where I went ahead and roughed everything into, but after we got to looking at it and talking about it, we've actually decided to leave the shower head on that wall, but relocate the shower valve to an interior wall. So what I want to do today is go ahead and get that shower valve mounted up and get the supply lines rerouted over to it and everything hooked up and then get the shower head roughed in. So let me take you over there and show you what that project's going to look like. All right, well, I'm going to have to interrupt the uh, regular scheduled program in here. Uh, unfortunately, when I was filming this, I'm using a camera with an external microphone. I failed to get the microphone turned on. So uh, I've got the video, but no audio. And rather than going and trying to do a voiceover on it and having the video and the audio out of sync, I just decided to come back and refilm it. So the gist of the video was uh, on this exterior wall here, this is the southern wall of the house, and my wife and I originally planned on putting the shower head and shower valve on this wall. So I had gone ahead and roughed in the supply lines for that valve here. But after we did that, we decided we really wanted that valve mounted on this interior wall and we were going to leave the shower head over here. So that meant I needed to move these uh, supply lines to this bay here and I needed to get a support board mounted between these studs to put my shower valve on. And mounting that board up, <clears throat> uh, I knew I want the center of the valve 48 inches off of the floor. So the center line of this board was no problem but then you have to do a little bit of a calculation to figure out how far in to mount it. So the way I did that was I took my shower valve and I laid it on a table and I measured from the table up to the end of the mud ring and that was two and three quarter inches. So I knew I wanted to mount this uh, two and three quarter inches into whatever the finished depth of this uh, wall was going to be. So from the back of this wall out to the face of the tile. Whatever that measurement was, I wanted to subtract two and three quarter inches and then mount the board at that measurement. So let's go ahead and pick up from the original footage uh, on that calculation and we'll finish the project out from there. So in order to figure out the thickness of the finished wall, we need to take a measurement from the back of the wall to the front of the stud, which is three and a half inches. Then we're gonna have a, a quarter inch thick tile we're going to have a half inch thick concrete board and a sixteenth inch thick uh, layer of thin set to attach the tile to the backer board. So the finished wall when you tally those up is going to be four and fifteen sixteenths from the back of this stud to the face of the tile. And then we know that the valve is two and three quarters from the face of the mud ring to the mountain surface. So you subtract the two and three quarters from the five, four and five sixteenths and you get one and nine sixteenths. So when we mount the board uh, in between the studs for the valve to rest on, the, the face of that uh, mounting board needs to be one and nine sixteenths inch from the back of this stud. So let's go ahead and uh, get one put in there and then we can see about relocating those supply lines to it. Now that I've got the mounting board in place, the next thing I need to do is go ahead and drill the holes in the top plate for the supply lines to come through. Now that the holes are drilled in my top plate, I'm just going to pull these two supply lines up and run them back over and pull them down through this wall. So we've got our supply lines pulled in now and I'm almost ready to go ahead and mount my uh, valve onto this board temporarily. But before I do that, this particular valve, it came with these uh, half inch NPT fittings and I have to adapt those to half inch PEX crimp on fittings. So I've already done these two uh, sides, I still have to do this third side. So let me go ahead and put the Teflon tape on this and put the adapter on it and then we'll drill the holes and mount it up to this board. Alright, and like I mentioned before when you're putting your uh, Teflon tape on these 
you want to make sure that the direction that you wrap it, that when you screw the fitting onto the threads, that it's not balling the, uh, the tape up, but that the tape is actually turned or wrapped the same direction as what the uh, fitting is going to go on there. And uh, you'll get a lot better seal that way. And then this is the uh, half inch NPT to PEX adapter. And we're just going to screw that on there. And then we'll tighten it down. All right, so now you can see I've got uh, the hot and cold inlets and the shower head exit. Uh, all those are converted from half inch NPT to half inch PEX. So now I can go ahead and drill my holes in the mounting board and temporarily mount this so that I can measure my PEX out to it and get a good length. I just went ahead and pre-drilled the holes because it's fairly close to the edges of the 2x4 and I didn't want it to split out. So Let's go ahead and screw it on now. Alright, so now that that's attached to the board, I can go ahead and pull my pecs down and get the lengths that I need to cut it to and then we'll be ready to crimp that on. All right, well now that I've got my supply lines cut down the length, I've gone ahead and removed the valve from the mounting board again, and that's just gonna make it a little easier for me to crimp the supply lines onto it. So let me get that done, and then we'll reattach it to the board permanently. So we put our crimp ring onto the pipe, slide the pipe onto the fixture, and then just crimp the ring off. And once you crimp it on, don't forget to go back and check it with the go, no go gauge. So that one's good. So now let's go ahead and do the, the cold side. Put your crimp ring on the pipe. Slide the pipe onto the fitting. Take your crimp tool, center it up on the crimp ring, make sure everything's still in alignment, and crimp it. And it's good. All right, so now that that's done, I can go ahead and reattach this to the board. All right, so now that my supply lines are hooked up on the uh, shower valve, the next thing I want to do is work on my line for the shower head itself. And before I can put the shower line in, I have to put this drop ear in over here on the wall where the shower head's going to be. So let's see about putting a support board in for that, and then we can go ahead and mount this up. So for my support board, I want the shower head to come out of the wall at 82 inches above the floor. So I've gone ahead and marked a line on uh, both of the studs and I've cut a board to go in between them. And then I've also marked a line on the inside of the studs that's an inch and nine sixteenths back because that's how far back I want the drop ear to be so that it's behind the 
uh, face of the stud. So let's go ahead and get this board mounted up. Now the support board's in, I'll go ahead and mark the holes for the uh, drop here and we'll pre-drill those. So now that I've got the support board mounted in and I've got the holes pre-drilled for the drop ear, I need to drill a hole through the top plate for the supply line to the shower head here. And then I need to drill another hole in the top plate over here for the supply line to feed from the shower valve. So let me get those drilled and then we'll run the line in. Now that I've got the holes in the top plates drilled, I'm going to go ahead and run the, uh, the line for the shower. So now that I've got the line pulled in, I'm just going to go ahead and crimp the drop ear onto this line and go ahead and attach it here. We'll pull all the slack back to the other end, cut off the exact length, and go ahead and crimp it down. Alright, so that side of the shower head is done. Let's move back to the shower valve and attach it over there. Alright, so we've got our line cut off at the uh, valve here, and all we have to do is put our fitting on there and then go ahead and crimp it down. So we put our crimp ring on, slide it over to the fitting. Crimp the fitting in place and then check it with the go, no go gauge. <clears throat> and it's good. Well that completes my plumbing project for the day. I've got the shower valve installed in the new location that we picked and I've got the shower head roughed in over here in the new location. So this exterior wall is now ready for me to go ahead and put rock wool in. So I'm going to clean up this little bit of mess that I've got from uh, drilling all these holes and then we'll get to work on putting the rock wool in. So that's going to do it for today. Uh, we managed to finish the little plumbing project in the master shower and we finished getting all the rock wool up uh, on the interior of the house that I'm going to do with the exception of two bays in the kitchen that I have to leave open for uh, the electrician. And I, I talked to him the other day. He should be back out here sometime right after Christmas and we'll finish up the wiring and then I can finish insulating those two bays and at that point I can hire the spray foam guy to come out and spray the attic and the rest of the bays on the interior of the house that I haven't put rock wool in and the insulation will be done at that point so uh, pretty excited about that but uh, we're not quite there yet and in the meantime anytime I have out here to work is going to be spent under the house doing the rock wool under the first floor of the house and like I said, I, I don't really like taking the camera that I'm using right now under there because it gets too nasty and too gritty. And uh, none of my cheaper cameras are capable of filming under there because the light sensors aren't big enough. So I'm probably not going to film any, anything else under the house, but uh, we'll see. But for right now, that's going to do it. So until next time, y'all keep checking back.